I wanted to do a quick review on my 14 and a half year old saw stop. Uh, this model is uh, it is an industrial cabinet saw. However, when I purchased it, it was designated as a professional cabinet saw. But this is a five horse, 230 volt unit uh, with a 52 inch rip. And I'll show you more of the details about what I have done uh, over the years of using this. First thing I'd like to talk about is that I recently had a couple of issues with the saw. And in that process, I have upgraded the saw from a professional cabinet saw to the designation from saw stop to the industrial cabinet saw. Nothing else has changed other than uh, the designation. Uh, I did add this uh, blade insert. Um, I like this design. This is a very nice design and it, it locks in uh, perfectly. It is well thought out and brilliant. My original saw came with a standard insert that's made from you know, some kind of a composite material. I don't mind it uh, so much and it's great as a secondary uh, backup. Uh, so it's, it's okay. Uh, the dado uh, unit is pretty much the exact same thing for the exception of um, obviously it works with a dado blade. But I believe that uh, this unit design which is the same type of composite material, but this locking mechanism here uh, makes all the difference on how this uh, insert fits and stays in here. It's just very, very secure. Let's talk about the fence uh, real quickly. Um, I have been using this saw in a professional shop uh, for about uh, 12 of those years. Uh, it sat in storage for two years and then now is in continuous use again. Uh, I have owned it 100% of the time. Uh, the fence glides, I believe, like it was new. I have not had any issue with it. It's robust. It, uh, it has a lot of uh, strength to it in terms of uh, sideways motion, especially if you're you know, moving uh, large pieces of lumber, it seems to hold square quite well uh, and I really like this system. It is better than uh, some of the other brands on the market, although very similar. Let's talk a little bit about dust collection on this unit. Uh, there's a four inch port in the back. When I originally purchased this, I did not get, or did they offer, the blade guard with dust extraction built in. It was just a standard blade guard, but as you can see, there's a little bit of dust here. It tends to uh, fly out from the blade and down over top of this. It's not necessarily coming out through this bottom hole because there's a, a shroud that encapsulates the bottom side of the blade where the dust collection happens. However, there's a lot of dust created and it does not all get pulled into the system. I have a three horsepower uh, Oneida dust collector and you know it's very difficult to get perfect dust collection in a table saw if you're not also over the blade collecting as well. Within about a month or so of owning the saw this little pop-out switch this plastic piece uh, broke off and I had never replaced it until just recently but in addition to that, the cabinet uh, motor cover here, which is made from steel, is actually quite heavy and weighs down on this side of the saw where it's not hinged. And so what it does is it tends to sag a little bit. Uh, and actually I think over time now that it's quite warped, but let's take a look inside. I wanted you to see the amount of dust that remains on the bottom of the cabinet and tends to come out of this opening in the cabinet. It's quite a bit actually. Also as you can see quite a bit of dust 
uh, lays into the uh, motor cover as well. Looking up underneath the saw, I removed the blade insert. And you can see that this saw has a small door here, which allows you access to the nut uh, for the arbor a little more easily. But it does have a cast iron shroud that comes underneath of the blade itself, attached to a four inch uh, dust hose, and then out the back where you connect your dust collection system. Um, this door, which is nice, uh, has a, a nut, which allows you to remove the door if needed. Uh, but generally speaking, you can kind of see uh, the amount of dust that is um, still laying around in the saw. Uh, it, it definitely does not collect a, uh, a portion of the dust with the dust collector. There's a couple of nice pluses to this saw in addition to it, uh, its quality. Uh, one, it has a lockout switch here, which is very nice. And two, it also has a door on the opposite side uh, to give you access to uh, the pulley and some of the other uh, stops that are kind of hard to reach. Let's quickly take a look at the workings underneath the saw. Uh, we have a belt from the motor that drives this intermediate pulley and in turn drives a second pulley that goes all the way to the arbor and the blade. Now they need this intermediate pulley so that this secondary belt and arbor is independent of the motor so that when the brake is activated that forward momentum in the blade causes the arbor housing to drop out of its detent and below the table against this rubber. Uh, it's hard to see, but there's a little rubber stop here. Now, I had an issue with the bearings in this uh, arbor housing. Now, when I spoke with the individuals at SawStop, they told me I could either just replace these bearings and maintain everything else the way it was on the saw, or to bring this saw up to 2019 standards, I needed to replace the entire housing, the brake cartridges, and the switch to that standard. And then they also provided me with a new serial number that would bring this saw up to their ICS standard. I've raised the blade all the way up. <clears throat> In addition to the new Arbor housing and assembly, uh, it came with a new nut and flange and also you can see uh, the brake cartridge in that location. So I removed the blade. I wanted to show you the flange side of the arbor. Now when I first received this and installed it, uh, this main surface of the flange is milled perfect. However, uh, when I put a blade on it, I noticed that there was about a eight or nine thousandths of run out on the blade. When I put my dial uh, gauge on this flat surface, it's milled perfect. In fact, there was zero, almost zero run out on this surface. However, when I brought the dial caliper, or the dial, I'm sorry, up to this edge, I noticed that there was a small piece of casting that was sticking out in front of the, um, the surface of this flange, which seemed very unusual to me. Uh, so what I did was I filed it down until I reduced all of that extra uh, material. And I don't know if you can see it in the uh, camera, but there is a seam or something right here is where that piece was folded in to this flat surface. And I would not have noticed it because it just looked exactly like the rest of this flange, but uh, taking a file and removing this has basically uh, totally trued this up almost perfect. I also wanted to mention that I am using the original saw blade that came with the saw, 60 teeth, uh, I have had it sharpened a few times. I don't only use this blade, but I did just get it resharpened again, and it cuts 
and performs extremely well. Yep. My initial thought was that the saw blade that is provided with the saw may or may not necessarily be of very good quality, but I can tell you that this uh, saw blade has been uh, of good quality and, and worked very well for me. Okay, so I wanted to recap really quickly. Uh, when I first installed this saw in my shop, uh, it wouldn't start, and it was giving me a series of blading lights on the starter in which uh, I couldn't decipher. So I called customer service and they told me that there is a thermal uh, device inside the starter that was keeping it from starting. So they told me that I would need a new uh, contactor. So I purchased one and that seemed to be the issue. However, when I got this all running, I noticed that the bearings uh, were making a lot of noise. When I called them back, they told me that I could obviously replace the bearings if I wanted, or if, uh, if I would consider upgrading the saw to the new standard by replacing the arbor uh, and the uh, brake uh, housing, as well as a new switch. Uh, I was concerned that that was going to cost a lot more money. However, it was quite reasonable. And I think it's quite reasonable because they want uh, legacy saw owners like myself and, and saws like this, they want to bring them up to today's standard by uh, you know, upgrading the electronic parts uh, within the saw. And it helps them maintain these saws down the road. Uh, you know, the older parts and pieces, they may uh, want to discontinue at some point. And, you know, now all of the saws and the new saws are using the same brake cartridges as this one, even though this is an older saw. So, in addition to that, though, and all of the parts, uh, they were willing to replace all of the extra brake cartridges that uh, obviously were unused, uh, free of charge. And that was really nice because I had four other cartridges that they were willing to replace. So that was big help uh, in terms of cost, and they even paid for the shipping. That being said, replacing the arbor housing uh, is a very difficult task and time consuming. Uh, it was recommended originally that I remove the top uh, to install it. However, I would then need to realign the top after I reinstalled it and I figured that was a much more difficult task. Uh, however, <laughs> uh, replacing that arbor assembly from underneath the table was uh, a challenge. Uh, in a couple of different ways. One, uh, the motor is heavy and the unit, uh, the unit that, that I was installing is also a little cumbersome. And replacing the belt between the intermediate pulley and the arbor pulley is very difficult because that distance is fixed and there's no way to loosen it to get the belt on. The belt is a V-groove serpentine style belt and the pulleys have, of course, grooves in them as well. So sliding the belt on was not really an option. It just was very, very challenging to make that all happen. I think just installing that belt took me uh, well over two hours to get it on there. It just was a struggle. Um, in addition uh, to that, um, I would say the only gripe that I have is dust collection on this saw. Uh, and I think it's probably similar for a lot of saws. Uh, the four inch dust uh, port is really just not enough uh, to extract all of the dust from below the blade. A blade spinning at 4,000 RPM can throw dust uh, at, at you know, extreme speeds that a dust collector just may not be able to uh, extract. Uh, and I know that they offer uh, an overarm dust collection system, which is probably uh, much better, or one that comes from the rear of a blade guard. And I think those probably work uh, in tandem with your four inch dust board. I think they probably work even better. Uh, but having said that, uh, I think that uh, I would absolutely buy this saw again if given the opportunity. I think the cost of $4,600 uh, that I originally paid is well worth uh, the price of safety, uh, as well as the uh, quality of this saw. I believe that there's a lot of value in this quality. Uh, it is, um, it, it just, it, it's very robust. It has a lot of weight to it. 
uh, and it, it seems to have stayed true over the years. And uh, I'm very, very happy with this saw, and I would definitely buy it again. If anybody is interested in buying a, uh, an industrial cabinet saw from SawStop, you definitely will not be disappointed. The five horsepower motor is as strong today as it was when I purchased it and has never given me an issue. Uh, so that is my quick 14-year uh, review of uh, a legacy saw saw. Uh, thank you very much.